Hi guys, this is Sadek from Dwadman.com and in this video, we will show you how to dual boot two custom ROMs or a stock ROM and a custom ROM on your Android phone. So regarding this, the first ROM should be the base ROM which your phone is currently running. The base ROM could be the stock firmware or the a custom firmware as well. It is recommended to be on a stock firmware but you could also use a custom firmware. In case of a custom firmware, please make sure to have an AOSP ROM. So as for my case, I am using the Pixel Experience ROM as the base ROM, as the base firmware. You could use any AOSP custom ROM or the even the stock ROM will work when it comes to the base ROM. Then we will do a dual boot, so we will install one more ROM and the next ROM should be a GSI ROM. It could either be the official GSI ROM, which is the pure stock AOSP experience or you could use the Pixel Experience, Evolution X, CR Droid and all such GSI ROM. So you could run two custom ROM at the same time or a stock ROM and a custom ROM. So before starting, please make sure you have a working base ROM which could either be a stock ROM or a custom ROM and then we'll proceed ahead to install the second ROM while the first ROM is running in the background. You could easily switch between both this ROM simply by doing a restart. So in my case, I'll show you how to install Evolution X ROM on top of Pixel Experience. So my first ROM will be Pixel Experience and my second ROM will be Evolution X ROM. So upon doing a simple restart, I will be able, able to switch from the Pixel ROM to the Evolution X ROM. Then again, I will do a restart and I will be back on the Pixel ROM. So we could easily switch between both the ROM by just doing a simple restart. The entire process will not wipe off any data, but still take a backup beforehand and we will not be using PC anywhere. The entire task will be done directly on your phone itself. So with that in mind, let's get started. First and foremost, you have to unlock the bootloader. That's quite obvious. So you could refer to my guide and make sure to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Yes, unlocking the bootloader will wipe off data and it might nullify the warranty. So proceed ahead at your own risk and make sure to unlock the bootloader. Once that is done, you have to now check the CPU architecture for your phone. For that, you could either use the Triple Checker app from Play Store or an app known as CPU Z. Both the app will work in Triple Checker app. You have to refer to the CPU architecture with the 64 bit ARM. For example, this is the CPU Z app. In that app, you have to go to some tab. Check out the kernel architecture is showing as ARC64. So whether it's ARC64 or ARM64, both mean the same thing. Most of the Android phones now comes with the ARM64 bit only. And in most cases, your CPU will be 64 bit itself. So make sure to note down this value somewhere. Once that is done, you now have to install the Shizuku app. This will allow us to give the, the side loaded GSI ROM system level API access without the need for root. So let's install and set up the Shizuku app. So you could download the Shizuku app from Play Store or, or from GitHub as well. So let me install the Shizuku app. So let's install the app and then we will set up the app. You could set up the app using the PC via rooted phone or simply from your phone itself. Since I am not using a PC and our phone is not rooted, so I'll show you how to install and set up the app without either of these two things directly on your phone. So once you have installed the Shizuku app, launch it. Now tap on pairing under start while the wireless debugging. But before that, let's first enable USB debugging. So go to the settings menu. From there, go to about phone and tap on build number seven times. You will get a prompt that you are now a developer. Once that is done, let's now launch the Shizuku app. Now tap on pairing under start while the wireless debugging and tap pairing and then you have to tap on notification option and enable the toggle next to all Shizuku notification. I'll show you why we have to enable this toggle later on. I'll show you this as well. As of now, just enable the toggle. Now go back and now tap on developer option. This time around, go to the wireless debugging and enable it. You will get an RSA key fingerprint or the Wi-Fi address. Tap on allow. Now go to the wireless debugging menu. And from here, tap on pair device with pairing code. You will now get a pairing code and you have now got a prompt from the Shizuku app. So we have enabled notification so that Shizuku could display the prompt over here. Now just type in the same prompt in the same code in the Shizuku prompt that you've got on your phone and then hit enter. Now you will get a message that Shizuku pairing is successful and Shizuku could now start. So let's now launch the Shizuku app. Now go back. So let's go back and now tap on start under start while the while is debugging. You might get one more prompt such as developer option. So go there. Now disable the toggle next to while is debugging and re-enable it. Now again, let's go back to the app. And as you could see, Shizuku has now started running. And you will get the CMD window and once the CMD window closes, you, you could verify that the Shizuku is now running prompt as you could see from here. So with this, Shizuku is now running onto our phone and you could now proceed ahead with the next step.
So let's just wait for the time frame. And next up, we now have to install the DSP loader app. Using this app, we'll be installing the second ROM onto our phone. So go to the GitHub page and then you could install the DSP loader app. Let me show you. Go here and then go to the release section. And from the release section, you could download the latest version of this app. So download the app from here. And there are three, four variants. You should have to download the app release.apk. So download this version from the GitHub page and once you have downloaded it, let's now install it. So just a minute, let me now install the app. So let's go to file and this is the app. These will load the apps. Tap on install and the app is now installed. So tap on open and it will you will now get the Shizuku prompt. Tap on allow all the time. Once that is done, now you have to tap on setup and you now have to make a new folder where you have to place the GSI ROM. So let's tap on create a new folder. And let's rename this folder as GSI. We will now place our GSI ROM inside this folder itself. Now tap on OK. Then select use this folder. And then tap on allow. And then tap on grant. And after this, you now have to place the ROM file into this folder. But first, let's download the GSI ROM. GSI ROM of your choice. So regarding the GSI ROM, you can download either the official Google files, GSI ROMs, or the custom ROM as well. So let me show you both these ROMs once. You could directly download from your phone itself i'm just showing you on pc so that a large screen so these are the gsi rom as of now android 14 preview is highly unstable so please don't download android 14 gsi at the very most you could download android 13 gsi so download either the google official gsi from here android 13 12 or 11 or you could download a custom gsi from here as well so these are the custom gsi as you could see the google gsi osp ancient os project elixir and these are the unofficial android 13 and unofficial you get evolution x and arrow os so in this guide, I'll show you two ROMs. The, the first will be using the Google GSI. And secondly, I'll show you using the Evolution X ROM as well. So my base ROM will be the Pixel ROM itself. And the second ROM by which I'll be doing a dual boot will be either the Google GSI ROM or the Evolution X ROM. So first of all, let's try out the Evolution X ROM. So for that, make sure to download the ROM onto your phone. And once you've done the download, open the File Manager app. And as you can see, this is the Evolution X ROM. Simply move this ROM to the GSI folder which we have just made. So move the GSI ROM over here. And the file has now been moved. So let's now verify the same. As you can see, we now have the Evolution X ROM onto our phone. So this will be our dual boot ROM now. So anyways, let's now launch the DSP loader. So let me bring the app to the home screen. And launch the ROM and then tap on select the file to be installed. And now select the Evolution X ROM. Now tap on install. You will get a prompt. Tap on proceed. And it will now begin the extraction of the XZ file. Likewise, it will also then install the ROM on its own. In the meantime, you could see there are two toggles. The first is the user data size. You could enable this toggle before the flashing of the ROM. And then you could determine the size that you want to give to this ROM while flashing. By default, it will give 2 GB. But if you believe that it's quite small, then you could change the user data size and increase it as well. But make sure that the maximum size that you could allocate to user data could be the 40% of its total file size. Yes, that is the rule. In most Android phones, you could only allocate up to a maximum of 40% user data partition over as compared to the overall phone size. So verify the overall OS size and then allocate maximum up to 40% user data. Re regarding the data partition, the first ROM and the second ROM data partition will not conflict. Whatever files are there in the first ROM, you could not be accessed by the second ROM and the whatever files are in the second ROM, you cannot access by the first ROM. They both have the separate data partition and all the files that you have installed and all the apps that are there on the second ROM will not be there on the first ROM. It will give you separate work system to work upon. That's definitely a great thing. So your files and account will not be interlinked or conflict. You could use a separate Google ID on the second ROM and a separate Google ID on the first ROM. So in my case, I'm using one for my work profile and the second ROM for my personal profile as well. So you could carry out this task as well. And second toggle is the image size. You should not interact with this toggle. The image size is used to check the size of the GSI ROM. By default, the app will automatically check the size and do it on its own. You don't have to interact with the image size. You could only interact with the user data size and allocate the size depending on the ROM, on the ROM size as well. As told before, please make sure to allocate up to a maximum of 40% of the total phone storage. By default, the app will allocate around 2 GB, out of which most of the space is taken by the system. 
and for the data partition i guess we get around 200 mb yes that's quite small so you have the option to increase the user data size and most of the size is taken by the system dot img partition so for us to work with we only get around 200 mb so you could extend the data partition size but please do so before installing the rom and as far as the image size is concerned you will not have to interact with the image size let the app do this maths on its own so let's wait for the time frame and as i told you you could use any of these official rom or the unofficial build as well there are, are quite a few as you could see custom rom custom based gsi rom as of now i'm using the evolution x rom and i'll show you how to use evolution x rom and the pixel rom after that i will replace the evolution x rom with the official android 13 rom gsi rom as well so i'll show you both this process the official gsi rom only takes up to five to six seconds to flash whereas the custom gsi rom would take up to five to ten minutes as you are saying i will also show you to flash the gsi rom of the official google and that will only take around six to seven seconds at the very max so that's quite fast whereas when you are flashing the a custom gsi rom it will take up to five to ten minutes this is the step one of two after that it will carry out one more step that will also take only a few uh, around two minutes and then i'll show you how to access the second os so you could easily switch to the custom rom the both the rom by just doing a simple reboot so as you could see it's not making the image file and this is the last step so as i was telling you you, you just need to do a simple restart and then you could easily switch between two custom rom and the entire process will be done onto your phone itself there is no need for root and the process will not wipe off any data on your phone as well but when you want to uninstall or remove the gsi rom then in that point in time you might have to do a factory reset I'll show you how to do that as well at the end of this video. So let's first wait for the ROM to be flashed and then I'll show you how to remove the GSI ROM and so that you only have your stock current ROM in the first slot and you could leave the second slot empty. So let's wait for the time frame and after that I'll show you the Evolution X ROM and then we'll remove the Evolution X ROM and then we'll go back to the Google GSI ROM. In fact, you could easily, once you have first time booted to the second ROM or the Evolution X ROM, then you could even remove the evolution account from your phone there is no need to place the gsi rom onto your phone you could easily free up the space and remove the evolution account from your phone and your phone will still be able to identify and boot to the second rom but to be on the safer side i would recommend you to keep this rom file onto your phone itself and don't uninstall the app or the rom but i have checked and in my case i have removed the dsu app as well and, and i have removed the evolution x rom as well and even after that i was able to easily boot my phone to this rom on a simple restart so while you don't have to play, keep the ROM after flashing or the app, but I will still recommend you to keep both this file onto your phone so that if something goes wrong, we could easily do a recovery in without any issues. So, anyways, let's wait for the time frame. And the step that I'm carrying out here are applicable across all the Android phones. It should only support Project Treble, which I guess every Android phone which was launched with Android 8 out of the box and higher os version should support this out of the box so nowadays every android phone comes with the support for this treble support so you don't have to worry about that but if you still want to verify then you could use the projected treble app that i have shown you in the above step so let me show you once again so as you could see you will get this project treble supported message most of the android phone now support this project treble and while the rom is being flashed let me tell you one more thing once you've got hold of the CPU architecture, in my case it was the ARM64. So then when you proceed ahead to download the GSI ROM, make sure to download the ROM which corresponds to the same architecture, which is ARM64. As you can see from here, don't download the x64 underscore x86, only download the ARM64 bit. And the GMS stands for Google Mobile Services. So if you download the GMS package, then you will get all the Google app as well. And without GMS will only get you the stock experience without any Google app and services. In my case, I use the GMS package as well. And this is for the official GSI package. Similarly, if you go to the custom ROM as well, you could see it's the architecture of ARM64 itself. So all the ROM, I guess, are of ARM64 itself. So make sure to download only those ROM which correspond to your CPU architecture. Luckily, for in our case, all the ROM are CPU architecture of ARM64. So it should support on our phone. That's not a cause of concern. I'm using Evolution X. You could use any of this ROM for your choice. So, anyways, let's now check out the result. And as you could see, installation is now complete and you will get a prompt. So, tap on allow runtime access. 
and it will not process the system partition and could only take a few seconds. So we have just gave it the access to the logs on our phone and once that is done, it will then process the partition, system partition file and it should only take a few seconds and once that is done, you will be notified of the same and we could then easily boot our phone to the second ROM. So let's wait for the time frame and it should only take a few additional seconds and you could also refer to my guide and get this job done. I made the guide and screenshot as well. You could refer to the guide and the screenshot and get this job done. I have given the link in the description. You could refer to my guide anyway. And as you could see, this is the user data size that I was talking about. You could change the size in GBs, gigabytes and write the size of your choice. Anyway, as you could see, our process has now been completed and it's showing an image installed successfully. Now, as you could see in the notification panel, let me show you. So, the, the, the dynamic system is ready to start using it, restart the device. So, just tap on restart and currently I was using Pixel Experience ROM and now I flash the Evolution X ROM. So, our phone should now boot to the Evolution X to GSI ROM and it should only take a few seconds. Do keep in mind that the first boot up might take a few additional seconds. That's completely normal. From the subsequent boot up, it will not take that much time. So, let's wait for the time frame and our phone should now boot to the Evolution X ROM in the second partition and so as of now our phone will be having both the ROM, the Pixel Experience ROM as well as the Evolution X ROM. We haven't done any data wise, neither we used the PC and nor we required root. So as you could see our phone has now booted to the Evolution X ROM and the first boot up might take a few additional seconds. I'll skip the initial setup process to directly take you to the OS. So let's wait for the ROM to boot up and then I'll show you the process as well. The first boot up might take a few additional seconds and this is the boot animation so you should leave your phone in that, st in that state from the subsequent boot up it will not take that much longer so let's leave our phone in this state itself and let's wait for it to boot up so our phone is now in the evolution x rom and let me simply skip the initial setup and carry out the process just accept all these things and skip and let me show you that as well. Let me skip this as well. And as you could see, we are now in the Evolution X ROM. And all the apps that we have installed in the Pixel ROM, such as the Shizuku app, all the BSU side loader app, as you could see, all those apps are not here. And this is the paper app in the Evolution X ROM. You will not get that app onto your Pixel ROM. The data partition are separate for both these ROMs. And as you could see, this is the file manager app, and the internal storage is free. and there is no file in the download folder and as you can see there is no GSI folder as well. So the data partition of both this ROM are completely different. You could not install the app of your choice and make and carry out a task over here. It will not interact or conflict with the Pixel ROM. So as of now we are booted with the to the Evolution X ROM and if you go to the notification panel as you could see you could easily just tap on restart and then you will be back to the original Android version. In our case, to the original base ROM, which in our case was the Pixel ROM. So once you have done all the usage, let me show you the status as well. Settings, Poco, I am using a Poco F4 phone for that matter. And as you could see, it's a Triple ARM64, uh, Evolution X ROM. And once you have done with the task, just tap on restart. And our phone should now reboot to the stock ROM, the stock base ROM, which in our case is the Pixel ROM. You could either use the stock firmware or any AOSP ROM as the base ROM. That's not a cause of concern, though it's recommended to use the stock firmware, but you can also use a custom ROM. But make sure that the custom ROM, which will act as your base ROM, should be an AOSP based ROM itself and not highly modified custom ROM. It should AOSP based ROM, such as the Pixel ROM or the Evolution X ROM, will act as a base ROM well and good. So, as you could see, we are now back to the Pixel ROM and all the apps are there as well. This is the DSU app, as you could see, and we have the Shizuku app and the App that I shown you in the Evolution X ROM is not there, so you could easily now switch between both this ROM as and when required just by doing a simple restart. For whatever you have to do, you could do then tap on restart in the notification, and as soon as you hit the restart, let me show you once again. Our phone should now be back to the Evolution X ROM, and you could easily switch between both this ROM as and when required. So let me now boot our phone to the Evolution X ROM, and after that we will then show you one more ROM to side load. This time I'll show you the official google gsi image file so let's wait for the time frame and the first i am currently 
doing a dual board to the evolution x rom and then i will be back to the base rom do keep in mind that whatever modification you are, you are carrying out should be done in the base rom itself so in my case whatever modification i need to do i will be doing in the pixel rom which is my base rom you should not carry out any customization system level tweaks on the second rom do keep in mind that and so with that said let me now once again boot to the original rom which in my case was a pixel rom and after that i'll show you how to switch over to the one to the official google gsi image as well the flashing for the gsi image will not take that much longer it should only take a few seconds and as i have told you before you could easily remove the rom as well as the app when not in use but you should not do so just to be on safer side i would re recommend you to keep the dsu side of the app and the gsi rom file onto your phone as well because if something goes wrong then we could easily flash it and revert our back to the original working condition so let me now show you so this is the restart option and upon doing a restart we'll be back to the system rom so if at any point in time you want to remove the gsi rom so as of now there is no other method apart from doing a factory re reset i will show you that as well but before that let's now replace the evolution x rom with some other gsi rom in my case i'm using the official android 13 gsi rom which i have downloaded from the official side so let me show you so let's go to the file app and from there go to the internal storage and under the gsi let's move the evolution x rom let's move it somewhere else let me move here so it will act as a backup and now let me show you this is the google gsi rom official rom so let's now move this rom to the gsi folder so whatever rom you want to flash now as a dual boot make sure to place that rom in the gsi folder itself and not anywhere else so let's now verify so under gsi folder as you could see it's now the google official android 13 rom so let's now boot our phone using that to go to the dsu site loader and as i told you before you could enable the user data size and then type in the partition size as you want in my case i'm simply using it 2 gb you could use any size of your choice so let's first tap on the installation and select the gsi rom and then if you want to interact with the user data size you could do so right now if you don't want it then simply leave it unchecked and you should not interact with image size now just tap on install then tap on proceed and it will as you could see the flashing is now done so so yes so as you could now see the so let's now select the file to be flashed now select the gsi rom but as of now since we have done a restart the shizuku app will not be running so we have to run the shizuku app as well so for that again let's launch the shizuku app and tap on pairing then go to developer option then go to wireless debugging and then tap on enable wireless debugging and tap on pair device pairing code we have now got a pairing code let's now type in that code it's zero double five six five seven and tap on enter and the pairing is successful let's now go back to the shizuku app go to its home page and now type on start and shizuku has now started so once you have started the shizuku let's now as you could see it's now running so let's now once again launch the dsu side app so let me close the app now and let's now launch the dsu app and tap on select the file to be installed then select the gsi app gsi file in my case i'm using the android 13 gsi then tap on install you will get a prompt and you could see the user data size is 2 gb is the default size so just tap on proceed and you will not get the prompt type on allow one time access and flashing the G official gsi rom only takes around 6 to 10 seconds as i told you before it's quite fast as compared to the custom gsi rom so let's wait for the time frame and the rom should be flashed within a few seconds and once that is done we will just do a simple restart and our phones will now be back to the official google gsi rom the base rom is remain untouched in my case the base rom is the same as the earlier time i am using the pixel rom you have to stick with the same base rom across all the flashing whatever changes have to be made you have to do some changes in the second rom so in my case as you can see flashing is now complete you could now just tap on the restart here and let's now wait since we have now flashed a new gsi rom the first boot up could take up a few additional seconds that's completely normal so let's wait for the time frame <coughs> and just make sure to remove the older gsi file from the gsi folder in my case my folder gsi was the evolution x rom so i removed that rom from the gsi folder and then i place the new gsi file which is android 13 gsi file onto the gsi folder 
and now as you could see our phone is now booting to the android 13 gsi file if you are just planning to switch between two gsi rom then you don't have to do any reset you only have to do a reset when you want to completely remove the second rom and you want to only use the first rom i'll show you that as well in the meantime as you could see we are now in the android 13 gsi build official build let me skip the initial setup screen so let me skip that as well and skip this as well and as you could see we are now in the official android 13 build of the gsi rom so let's go to settings as well and go to about phone you could see it's the gsm on arm 64 and it's the android 13 build and this is the system and latest android 13 as you could see you could easily install the ota updates right from this section itself there's no need to do any uh, go for separate route to install this update you could directly install from here itself so guys and this is our second gsi rom and if you want to go back to the stock rom to the stock firmware then just again tap on the restart and your phone will be back to the base rom which in our case is the pixel rom and similar to the earlier case this time around as well both the rom will have separate data partition the files on the first rom will not be conflicting with the second rom and vice versa since both these rom have their own data partition you could easily sign in with a different google id and have your own google apps and play store apps installed onto the second rom it will now it will not conflict with the first rom so as you could see we now have both the rom installed the first rom is the pixel rom and the second rom is the gsi rom you could easily switch between all the gsi rom whether it's the official gsi rom or the third party custom gsi rom you could easily do so without the need to do any reset all you have to do is simply go to the gsi folder which we have made and make sure to remove the original gsi file older gsi file and, and replace it with the newer gsi file which you want to flash for example if you now want to flash the spark os then simply download the spark os file and place it inside the gsi folder and replace the older gsi file please make sure that you don't have two gsi file in the same folder only keep that gsi file which you want to flash so with that said you you could now easily switch between two gsi rom or a gsi rom and a sock firmware now comes the last part of this guide if you want to remove the dual boot and you only want to use the one rom which was the initial case so if you want to remove all the other dual boot partition and you want to go back to the stock simply stock rom so in my case i only want to in my case it means my phone will only have the stock base rom which is the pixel rom so if you want to remove all the other rom you have to do a factory reset that is the only way out i could not find any other way of removing gsi rom from our phone so you now have to do a if you are planning to simply re remove this gsi rom then it will not affect the process as you could see even if i do remove the gsi rom from here if i move the file to the trash and even if i remove the gsi app as well let me show you i have removed both the gsi rom and the gsi app as well but even then i will be able to easily reboot to the gsi rom because it has not been flashed onto our phone let me show you that as well so just to recall i am showing you how to revert to, to the stock condition and remove the gsi partition for that i have removed the gsi rom and i have also removed the dsu side loader app as well but even in spite of removing the rom our phone will still boot to the gsi rom so simply removing the rom file and the app will not do any good you will have to do a factory reset so as you could see our phone is not booted to the gsi rom even though we don't have any gsi file onto our phone so let's just wait for the boot up and then i'll show you that as well so as you could see our phone is again booted to the gsi rom even though we we have removed the gsi rom and the dsu dsu side app as well and so you could easily once again type on reset and go back to the stock base rom so in order to remove all the gsi rom and you want to re if remove the dual boot as well then factory reset is the only way out doing so will remove the gsi rom but it will also remove all the data from your base rom as well so apart from the second rom it will remove all the data from your base rom as well so make sure to take a backup of all the data on your phone beforehand and only then you should restart your phone so i will now show you how to do a restart and then remove do a reset and then remove the dual rom so first of all go to the settings menu on your phone the screen might map might vary depending on the rom that you own but it should be near or similar so go to backup settings system backup add your account and then take a backup now after that you have to go to the option reset option then tap on erase all data it will remove all the data from your phone so please take a backup and then tap on erase all data tap on erase all the data once again it will now do a factory reset and the process will take up around 10 to 15 seconds once that is done your phone will boot to the os and after that i'll show you that the gsi rom has been removed from our phone 
so let's wait for a phone to do a factory reset it should only take around 5 to 10 seconds and then we'll able to access the os so the reset has now begun and it's now done as well as you could see so our phone should and do keep in mind that the first boot up after doing a reset will take up a few additional seconds that's completely normal and nothing to worry about so let's wait for the time frame while the phone is booting up and with this the gsi rom have been removed from our phone and our phone is now back to the stock based rom in my case my phone will only have the pixel rom and no other rom as such so i'll show you that as well let me first boot to the os and then i'll do a restart and i'll show you that there is no gsi rom if you still have any queries then you could also remove the gsi rom from your phone because it will end up taking unnecessary space if you don't want to do a dual boot any longer then you could easily uninstall the dsu cellular app and you could also remove the gsi file as well if you don't remove it then doing a factory reset will automatically remove both this file so that's not a cause of concern and let's this is my base rom which is the pixel rom as i told you before so let me now accept the terms and condition and skip the initial setup screen and as you could see i will now boot up to the pixel rom so let me do so this is the pixel rom let me show you once again and this is the my base rom which was acting as my base rom all along so this is my base rom the pixel rom as you could see over here and there is no d user side loader app so if i now perform a restart let me show you that as well so if i do a restart my phone will again boot to the pixel rom because now there is no gsi rom i have removed the dual boot and the phone will now simply boot to the base firmware which is the pixel rom so let me show you that as well so it should now boot to the stock base rom which is the pixel rom in my case and the process will only take a few seconds so flashing the gsi and switching between two gsi will not wipe off any data on your phone but if you are planning to remove the gsi from your phone then for that you will have to do a factory reset apart from that if you are just planning to switch between any of these custom gsi rom or the official gsi ROM or even the google gsi rom you don't have to do any factory reset the reset is only required if you are planning to re remove the gsi rom so as you could see i have done a restart and it has again booted to the stock base firmware which was the pixel rom in my case and just to verify i am not just on the pixel rom as you could see from here so guys on that note i round off this video on how you could dual boot to custom rom or a stock rom on a custom on your android phone if you have any queries do let me know in the comment section and guys please like this video and subscribe to channel for more tips and tricks thanks a lot for watching